Caroline, your professional assistant. I've collected a broad database about fabrication and installation, and I'll be happy to accompany you while you work. Start off by thoroughly rinsing the cutting machine bed to remove any debris from previous work that may cause cracks during cutting. The cutting bed is now clean and ready for work. My sensors tell me this is a Caesar Stone porcelain slab. Caesar Stone porcelain slabs come with fiberglass mesh backing that reinforces the slab during the fabrication process and improves its resistance to impact after installation. As you know, the methods of working with porcelain are different from other materials you are used to. Before cutting, it's important to perform a visual inspection from several angles and a manual check for cracks, holes, or any other imperfections. Check for shade and gloss consistency between two slabs intended for the same project. Ensure that the slabs are from the same batch and that there's no deviation in thickness or warping. Porcelain, like all stone surfaces, contains a certain amount of silica, so you must use suitable personal protective equipment at all stages of fabrication and reduce hazardous dust by means of wet fabrication techniques and ventilation and extraction systems. I see that a new diamond blade for cutting porcelain has been installed. It's important to sharpen the blade with an aluminum oxide or quartz sharpening block before first use and after every few cuts. Great, now we can start. Because of the special characteristics of porcelain slabs, it's important to follow a few rules to achieve perfect cuts. Before you start to fabricate, cut the slab perimeter on all four sides 20 to 30 millimeters from the edge to release stress from the slab. When cutting porcelain slabs, it's important to make sure that the entry of the blade always starts from outside the slab. The saw feed rate when entering and exiting the slab must be 50% of the recommended saw feed rate during cutting. Increase the saw feed rate to 100% once the entire blade is in the slab. Cut the slab only in the direction of the blade rotation. Use plenty of water where the blade meets the slab to ensure efficient, high-quality work and prevent unnecessary wear and dust. Just before the blade starts to exit the slab, reduce the saw speed to 50% again and ensure that the whole blade exits the slab. To prevent damage to the blade or the cutting bed, don't allow the blade to protrude more than 2 millimeters underneath the slab. For optimal fabrication quality, try to reduce the vibration generated by the cutting to a minimum. Methods of cutting porcelain slabs with a water jet or CNC milling machine are similar to methods used for cutting other stone surfaces. You can check out the relevant parameters in the online guide on the Caesar Stone website. Perfect! The four perimeters have been cut successfully. Now let's move on to planning the cutting. Take a moment to look at the slab. Notice the configuration of the veins. Plan how it will all fit together and how the vein pattern will flow on the installed countertop. It's important to follow these principles when planning the cutting of porcelain slabs. Maintain a minimum distance of 50 millimeters between cutouts and external edges. Keep a net minimum distance of 50 millimeters between cutouts and wall cladding. Maintain a minimum distance of 50 millimeters between adjacent cutouts. When creating cutouts or internal corners, fabricate a radius of at least 10 millimeters to distribute the stress on the slab and prevent future cracks. Create only straight joins, not L-shaped joins. To prevent breakage during fabrication, create the cutouts in the slab in the center of the cutting bed and not close to the edge.
I've taken the liberty of preparing a scheme for cutting the slab according to Mrs. Smith's kitchen plan. Start by drilling corner holes for the sink and cooktop cutouts. Drill the corners with a diamond cup drill for porcelain to a depth of 8 millimeters and not the whole depth of the slab. This partial opening will be completed manually later on. Next, create the straight cuts of the sink or cooktop cutout, also to a depth of 8 millimeters. Excellent! Now continue with the rest of the cuts according to the plan. Single thickness edge profiles can be created for porcelain countertops. This edge profile exposes the body of the slab, which differs in color and pattern from the slab surface. You can also cut a 45 degree miter edge profile to create the illusion of a countertop thicker than the original slab, with the color and design of the edge identical to the countertop surface. Cut the miter edge from the area adjacent to the edge to which it will be attached, for pattern continuity. That completes the cutting. Before moving on, rinse the slab with clean water. Now the slab is clean and ready to be transferred to the manual countertop work table. Slabs with cutouts or holes are more susceptible to breaking, so handle the slabs carefully and steadily to prevent any damage. Transfer slabs vertically and avoid twisting them. Remember that health and safety are a top priority, so use protective equipment suitable for each stage in the fabrication process and work with water-integrated tools. Manually complete the opening of the drilled corners and the straight cuts until the internal piece of the cutout disconnects. All the corners have been properly cut, so you can continue with the cutout. Now turn the slab over and remove the mesh backing using a diamond polishing pad 50 millimeters from the front of the countertop and from the edge of the cooktop cutout. When installing an undermount sink that exposes the back of the slab, remove the mesh from that area too. Now it's time to attach the miter edges. A high quality professional edge will give the countertop a uniform look and make it less prone to chipping over time. To ensure best miter join results, use adhesives suitable for porcelain and the installation environment. Use adhesive the same color as the countertop for the best possible finish.
allow the full adhesive cure time according to the manufacturer's instructions for a durable join. Clean any adhesive from the countertop before it hardens completely with an acetone or solvent-saturated soft cloth. Create a beveled edge using diamond or ceramic polishing pads for porcelain. Work progressively from coarse to fine pads. A bevel of at least 3 mm ensures long-term durability of the edge profile. When you're done, clean the slab with plenty of water to remove any remaining fabrication debris, then wipe the slab with a squeegee and dry it. It's important to use a new cloth for this. Never store any fabricated slabs when they're wet. After cutting, the slab edges may be more susceptible to staining, so I recommend applying a protective layer of transparent wax on any visible exposed edges, such as countertop edges and sink cutouts. Apply the wax according to the manufacturer's instructions. Perfect! All the countertop pieces are now cut and ready to be transported to the customer's home. Porcelain slabs are large and heavy, so they must be transported safely. Load the countertop pieces onto a suitable vehicle with a securely attached A-frame appropriate for the size and weight of the pieces. Load the A-frame symmetrically to prevent it from overturning. Arrange the pieces on the A-frame face to back. Place pieces with cutouts in the middle of the stack between complete pieces for protection. Always use canvas straps to secure porcelain slabs. Never use metal chains. Now it's time to install the countertop. It's important to check that the fabricated countertop matches the plans and the kitchen dimensions. Single thickness porcelain countertops installed on kitchen cabinets must be fully supported by wooden subtops apart from sink and cooktop cutouts. Miter edge countertops can be installed on kitchen cabinets without wooden subtops with suitable support. Check that the base supporting the countertop is completely flat, level, and stable. Ensure that the front and back legs of the cabinets are sturdy and in full contact with the floor. Before placing the countertop on the kitchen cabinets, check that the cabinet tops are clean of debris that may damage the countertop. Great! The kitchen cabinets are ready for the countertop to be installed. Unload the countertop pieces symmetrically to maintain balance and prevent overturning. Carry the slab vertically with the cutouts at the top. Allow a gap of 2 to 3 millimeters from the wall. When working with adhesives, use suitable protection according to the manufacturer's instructions. Before gluing the pieces, clean the edges of dust and debris. Place a layer of paper on the cabinet underneath the seam to prevent the adhesive sticking the countertop to the cabinet. Use adhesive specifically for porcelain that matches the countertop in color with properties suitable for the installation environment. You can add pigments if necessary to match the countertop color. Stick paper masking tape on both sides of the seam to avoid staining by adhesive seeping out of the seam. Spread a generous amount of adhesive on both edges of the seam. Carefully follow the manufacturer's instructions for curing times. After the adhesive dries, remove the installation accessories and excess adhesive.
Give the countertop a final clean with acetone on a clean cloth. Never polish seams, as this will damage the texture and appearance of the countertop. Also, never apply any material to the countertop surface that could affect its appearance or performance, such as sealer, wax, or oils. Spread a generous amount of silicone in the gap between the wall and the countertop to prevent water from entering the cabinets. When installing a sink, seal the gap between the sink and the countertop with silicone, an adhesive seal, or a similar product. Once installation is complete, check that the countertop and work area are clean and tidy. Cover the countertop completely with corrugated cardboard or another protective material while work in the kitchen continues. It's also possible to create porcelain countertops overhangs. Here are our guidelines for creating sturdy, durable overhangs. An overhang on one side of an island can extend up to 300 millimeters beyond the cabinets without support. Overhangs on two or three sides of an island, L-shaped or U-shaped, can extend up to 250 millimeters beyond the cabinets without support. When support is necessary, attach a stable, non-flexible material to the underside of the overhang or a metal or wooden support construction. For a single thickness island overhang with exposed inner porcelain side panels, you can remove the fiberglass mesh backing with a polishing tool for a smoother appearance. Note that the inner polished side of the panel will look different from the outer side. If the support panel is made of porcelain, it must be a double panel and not a single 12 millimeter panel. Finally, when you're all done, give the customer routine care and maintenance instructions. More care and maintenance information appears on the Caesar Stone website. It's been a pleasure working with you, and I'll be happy to assist you in any future Caesar Stone projects.